Welcome to the curl release 7.74.0. This is December 9. Uh, it's all darkness around me here up in Sweden. We have really short days so and really the sun has risen but it's basically not shown itself today and it's going to set soon anyway. So started out <coughs> this morning by uh, packaging and um, you know, signing, uploading and everything and putting it on the site. I posted a blog post, I tweeted about it. So here's 7.74.0. This time, well, I am of course Daniel Stenberg. I work on Curl. I founded Curl. I'm the lead developer of it, I could probably call it. So I work for Wolf SSL. We do commercial Curl support. So if you need help with anything related to Curl, you know, features, bugs, porting, we're here for you. <coughs> Today I'm going to go through curl in if just a few numbers about the curl release, something about the security stuff that we fixed in this release, and, and there are actually three of them to talk about today. Some features or changes, some of the bug fixes, or at least a few bug fixes to highlight that I want to talk about. There are more, but you can always read up on all the details and something about what's coming up next, the future. Uh, yes, this is release 196. So we do releases every eight weeks. So if we stick to this schedule, number 200 will be happening in July. So mm, we have time to plan uh, for celebrations and stuff. <coughs> okay, and in this release we ha had uh, 46 contributors and 22 of them were new, reaching almost 2300 contributors R very soon. 22 people authored commits, 8 of them were new and now we're at 843 committers. Th these numbers are actually slightly lower than the last uh, release. Not that it matters because they go up and down a little bit, but just a note here. And of course we spent 56 days since the previous release, which is exactly what we're aiming for. So if we're just nothing bad happens, we do releases every eight weeks, which happens to be 56 days. So this days, uh, th this time we didn't do anything particularly bad or alarming. So we just kept to the schedule and we are at 8,301 days since we did the first curl release. Woohoo! Okay, so now we're at um, uh, this little thing. So today I announced three different security advisories. Uh, I think two of them are marked uh, severity low and one medium. They're pretty niche and narrow, uh, well, special, I should say, each of one of them. Probably most of you will not be affected badly by any of them, but let me go through them a little bit anyway. So just let you know. So this is a fun one. Trusting FTP pass V responses. Um, so basically when you do, when, when a, a client makes an FTP transfer, it, you know, it sets up, well, maybe you don't know, but this is how it works. You set up a, a control connection first, which is a one TCP connection. And over that TCP connection, you talk to the server and then you say, uh, let's transfer something, upload or download. And to do that, you connect a second TCP connection to that server. And you do that, you can do that uh, passive or active ways. So, it depends on who's going to initiate initiate that second transfer. But really, nowadays, everything is done with passive transfers because it usually doesn't work the other way. So passive is the default in curl. And if you do passive transfers, there are two ways to do passive transfers. You can do it with a newer command called EPSV, which is really the modern way and it supports IPv6 and stuff. So that's, that is what curl tries first. And if that fails, it will fall back to trying the pass v uh, command, which is really the original command used in FTP, uh, present in the uh, first FTP, well, the, uh, sort of the official FTP RFC, which is RFC 959, and it's really, really ancient, so it's been there forever. And when we do that, um, we, um, I'm just annoyed by 
spam comments in the chat. Uh, well, and when we do uh, def, uh, when we, when curl issues the a client, and really because this is the FTP protocol, when a client issues the pass v command, the server responds back with an IP address and a port number to connect to, to do the transfer on IP address port number. So yeah. So curl then trusts that the server re returns a proper IP address and the port number and it connects to that and it will deliver the transfer from there. And of course, yeah, we trust that response because that's how FTP is designed. But apparently, and of course, if then someone has, a, for example, is doing ha having a malicious FTP server somewhere, that server can return an IP address and port number that is internal to your network for example so if someone would run um, if someone would run curl somewhere on a server and you could possibly make that curl connect to a server somewhere and that server would then return an I internal IP address or in a, in, a, in a different port number you could have it actually connect to a local resource on in that server or network so this is a What's an, is it really annoying because this is how FTP works and now we have to limit how curl works with actual FTP functionality. A lot of other FTP clients already fixed this problem a long time ago. I actually referred to another uh, CVE in the CVE to a Firefox fix 13 years ago. So a lot of clients already fixed this a long time ago. But now, and, and we fix this basically by saying we ignore the IP address that your that this server sends back, and we only go to the port number. That's apparent. That's really, and we already supported that feature with an option with a flag. So now we basically just toggle the default for that flag. So now we will do that by default, and by doing this, we certainly will break some client installations, which then has to alter this flag and be prepared to be fooled by malicious servers. E, quite annoying. Still, if you're using passive FTP, consider this um, a sort of a little alert that it'll, it will change behavior from this release. Another FTP vulnerability, and this is even more niche. So bear with me here curl or libcurl really the library supports ftp wildcard matching so you could get a, di uh, a directory listing somewhere of uh, an ftp directory hundreds of files and you would um, get the list of files and you would have your function filter the, uh, that list of file names really is this file I'm interesting? Is this? Is this? Is this? Is this? And the callback would say, "Nah, skip this. Get this. Skip this. Get this." And uh, if that callback returns skip enough number of times, we will hit the Stack Overflow because it would do a recursive callback back to itself. So basically, if an, um, a malicious server knows this, for example, it knows that one a particular client is working against it and you know how that client works you could just maliciously make sure that the application does enough number of skips until it crashes it would be a denial of service attack from for a malicious server for a client that uses ftp wildcard matching with curl this way it's a very niche and i, I don't think a lot of applications actually do this and um, still could do still a security problem so be aware we will of course fix this and now, now it won't do that recursively. It was stupid to do it recursively. It's been there for a very long time. Nobody has found it before. Uh, right, right, and I didn't mention it, but the previous one that, the 80, that ends with 8284, the top one here, it's actually been present in curl then since the inception, since the curl 4.0. So it's been there for the longest time possible in the project. The, this one, uh, the 8285 one, has also been present since, I believe, curl 7.21 or something. Or was, uh, well, many years at least. Uh, they, these ones are going to really bump the average, uh, average age that we've had our flaws in the code until they were found. <coughs> and number three, 
the third security advisory for this time, inferior OCSP verification. So curl doesn't really does normal OCSP, but it does OCSP stapling, that, as it's called. So it's actually within quotes because it's actually not called OCSP stapling in the standard. It's called the verify status. But if you if you enable this, if you have if you have curl built with OpenSSL and you you use OCSP stapling called verify status, um, you can actually and you're doing this. Uh, and you're working with a, an, a yet again with a malicious server, the malicious server could actually forge that OCSP response and seemingly seemingly appear as if the certificate uh, is okay. I mean, the the whole point with it, that stable stapled response is for the, the response to include a response from the certificate authority saying that the certificate is okay. So that it's a way to make sure that tell the client it's not revoked, it's fine. But this way, the, res, uh, the server could actually uh, insert a, a forged response to say the, the cer uh, certificate is okay, even though it w might not be okay. It could have been revoked already, but curl wouldn't notice that. Even if you would have OCSP stapling enabled, if you used the curl built with OpenSSL, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> um, I don't think this hurts a lot of users, but it could potentially do if you were depending on it, if you are depending on it. And of course, we paid $700 in a, re in a reward for the reporter, to the reporter of this first one, trusting if the PPAS responses. And we paid $900 to the reporter of this uh, last one, OCSP ver verification. And you're, then you, of course, wonder uh, what happened to the middle one, uh, who's, who's, who's getting what amount for that. And I reported that so I don't get any money at all and I reported it actually because someone else reported it earlier in public and that person who reported it in public who's only using a username on github and I can contact the person so uh, basically uh, he lost she lost well roughly that amount of money by not reporting it to us using our uh, established channels well, I just elaborated on the 8286 there, so it's it's um, rewind the stream and listen again, or read up on it because I've actually, and and it good goes with for all these three ones. I've really, really tried to elaborate on exactly what the flaw is, how it works, and um, how it happened in the CVE reports on the curl website. So go there and read it, and if you don't understand it, uh, ask me, and I'd be really happy to elaborate and uh, and uh, you know extend the explanations because they're really in meant to be re readable, understandable, and really identify the problem. And um, they they typically also link to the fix, but the fix is usually, well, once, once you've read and understood the problem, the fix shouldn't be any sort of, you know, surprise because they fix the problem as described. Uh, I mean, they address the problem and, and make sure that it doesn't exist anymore. Um, so yes, sixteen hundred uh, dollars um, handed out in bug bounties this uh, release cycle, which is by far a record amount. That nine hundred reward uh, for the OCSP thing is a new record for a single um, security problem in curl, and I'm hoping that we can hopefully raise the rewards even more going further. So please keep on reporting. I'll show you the link later on. <coughs> so those were the three. So sort of security advisory is maybe the, the best reasons for upgrading curl right now but we also add something new right and that's why we have a new uh, minor number and we have a zero patch release and this time we introduce experimental support for hsts and it then adds this new option dash dash hsts it's experimental so you actually have to enable it by the, um in the build yourself manually. So this won't exist in your typical distro build or curl. And unfortunately, I know that a lot of people just get it from someone else's build, right? So this won't be used by a lot of users. But if you, 
um, if you want to make me happy and if you want to play out play with this feature try it out and see what happens how it works uh, how it can you know, work in your daily curl use uh, build uh, build a experimental curl build yourself and try it out so hsts is http and that's fun joke right secure tra tra Strict transport security. I can never really remember. Strict transport security. HTTP strict transport security, and it's about HTTP servers sending back back info saying, "Don't contact me again over non-HTTPS uh, channels." So basically, cache information that this is an HTTPS only site for this uh, for this amount of time into the future. And that's the command line option to enable it and you specify it with a file name as well so that the file name for the cached info so curl will cache that info um, in that particular file name um, i've been getting a lot of questions exactly how to use this with the curl command line tool so you basically will use it and consider and think of it more like cookies than anything else so a particular file that you use now and but another invoke could use another file and that might be a little surprise to you and it might be i mean because that's not the way you're used to use it with browsers and stuff but still uh, i don't want to go into having a central single place for curl command line to store for all command line invokes and stuff like that because that would be a nightmare to you know lock the file and have a huge file and also this hsts thing in browsers they have a preload list you know they they load a huge set of sites preloaded that are HSS by default. I mean, the, the second you start the browser, they will never do anything else but HTTPS, but curl doesn't preload anything. So yes, it, it will have that first, um, when you connect to the site the first time, uh, there's a risk that it could, you know, if it's been tampered with, it could redirect you back to HTTP and you would be vulnerable to that. But I haven't, I mean, we're not done discussing all that, but the, the preload list is uh, it's enormous. And even in, in a compressed form, it's like 700k k or so. So it's a, it takes a long time to load, even on fast machines. So I don't want to load 700k of data and, and uh, decompress on every invoke just because of the rare occurrence that it actually matters. So no preload at this moment in time at least if you do it with a libcurl actually added then these six new options and a libcurl application can preload whatever they want using these options so that you can actually uh, um, read data it, or, or rather the hss read function can actually then you can set it up so that when you if you write an application if you write a browser you can easily preload uh, whatever sites you want into the HSDS system within libcurl to make that preload functionality. So it's there, it's just not used by the command line tool. And I don't think we will go into that in the future either, but we, it's certainly worth discussing. And I, uh, but I rather want people actually to try it out first, to see that it actually works. Uh, can you make, does it make sense this way? And, and then maybe we can discuss uh, preloading or not preloading we've done 107 bug, bug fixes which is uh, uh, just a, a tad bit fewer than we did in the last release so we did 133 last time but i don't think it matters because what's a bug fix it's just a count it could be a big bug fix could be a small one so it mm, doesn't really say much <clears throat> but a few of those that we did i think i've sort of picked out about 12 of them that are probably more fun than the regular ones that we did this time so another experimental feature that isn't experimental anymore so we enable old service now in the build by default so if you just build curl by default you will get old service support in there of course you need to enable it too to make sure that curl actually does anything with it but now you can do it with a, so if you get curl from your distro tomorrow you will probably get it with all service support so you can enable it and usually in practice you actually uh, rarely actually want all service support until you get hp3 so maybe it's not such a big deal but uh, there are other servers using it like H h2 um so that's fun and i've also sort of 
realize again there that uh, experimental features are not really used by users so I, once they've been in the code long enough and we feel secure enough we just toggle off the experimental flag and ship it by default so we did uh, uh, at least eight different CMake fixes uh, in this release CMake fixes being fixes in the in the CMake build that you use to build curl with and I think partially partially at least this is triggered by the fact that we removed the scary warning in the previous release that said that it was an uh, incomplete build or uh, I don't remember exactly what the wording said but at least now it doesn't say that anymore so people are less scared of using the CMake build which is good because then people actually start using it and they fix problems we have and we also got a lot of new CMake build bug f uh, bugs issues and, and I mean submitted so I don't think we fixed a bunch of them of course but we also added a lot of them now to the known bugs document which is good because now we then have them detailed and documented in the documents that we can actually find out exactly what the pr problems their uh, existing problems are so people interested in in helping out and in improving our CMake build can go there and read it up I think it's l almost 10 of them or so so if you're if you want to find something to help us out with that's certainly a, an area of interest <coughs> right another just a little peculiar peculiarity so it turns out that at some point in the future we disable the use of package config when we build with OpenSSL cross compiled uh, in the configure script I really can't remember why we had some issues with it and uh, we toggle it off and now we toggle it back because someone else had an issue with it the other way around but really we really should use package config uh, for um, for it because that's normally the way Linux is set up even when cross compiled so this is just fixes improving things so what we did in the command line tool we did of course more than this but two things I want to just to mention is that <laughs> Annoyingly enough, curl would uh, uh, not only warn, it would also just exit with an error say, if it couldn't find the home directory, um, which is really, really wasn't called for. It doesn't really need the home directory that bad. It, you know, it, when you start curl, it tries to find the home directory so that it can check for some, you know, dot curl rc file and some other files. In particular, in this case, it was that it it wants the known hosts file if you use um, SCP or SFTP, and it couldn't find that, so it would fail. But mm, it's enough; it, it just can't find find those files. It could just continue anyway. It might fail the transfer, but it shouldn't. Um, exit and abort because of that so now it just warns about that situation and it turns out that we had a regression uh, of course yet another regression i should say and because when i when we switched internals in the curl tool to support parallel transfers you know dash capital z or z um you should try it out it's really fun uh, uh, when uh, when we uh, sort of that was a pretty big overhaul of the internals in the com command line tool to how to deal with URLs and transfers and everything and then for some reason I really can't explain it but I broke uh, the dash dash retry functionality for for uh, 408 responses from HTTP servers um, and now I repaired it so now it works again uh, for 408 responses good uh, some other fixes um, right, um, this is the first release we do on the, uh, on the new domain home. So we switched the site to curl.se from the other site. So I better not re repeat it because we can forget it. The other site will, of course, keep working for a very long time. Um, I have no plans to remove it. I mean, it's just domain name. And I own the domain, so why not just keep it there? I actually still redirect. I redirect in almost the entire site over to this host name so if you go to the site you will see that it'll change the host name and you will magically appear on this host name instead except if the uh, path include a few keywords so some of the older URLs actually still work uh, without uh, redirect just me trying to be gentle and do this in a slow pace so, but I'll change that <coughs> to a full redirect soon as well. Uh, I think 
perhaps most important to those people who actually downloaded the CA set bundle from the curl site. So th because we've always suggested a way to do that automatically, but it never used the dash capital L, so they it wouldn't use uh, follow redirects. So if you're using that command line that we proposed, it, it'll break when I add the redirect proper. <coughs> I fixed a little thing in the curl API. So we have a, uh, introduced a while ago, a year, two years ago, I don't remember exactly. Uh, I introduced a thing internally that basically limits the size of strings internally. So we never, well, I think there are some exceptions, but basically we never have strings longer than eight megabytes. <coughs> and we do this for security reasons and for, for sort of just finding mistakes because we there really shouldn't ever be any reason for having that long strings. Uh, and if you do, it's sort of a sign of something maliciously getting entered or uh, just a mistake somewhere. So we should detect it, find it, and sort of, you know, get out of it. And it turned out that in this case, for this function, the limit was actually set on the uh, on the input string and not the output string or whatever. So it could actually limit the string length to 2.7 megabytes, a third of it, instead of 8 megabytes, which actually affected the user. That was just a mistake. Fixed now. Another mistake is that uh, when we do uh, when we do resolving on Mac, you know, and and, and especially when you use curl and you use an IP address with numbers, an IPv4 address, you know, 127.0.0.1. And, and you curl that on any platform and uh, we don't send that to the resolver functions because we can convert it to binary ourselves it's not that complicated but on on mac we actually send it to the resolver function because it has some magic functionality so for some ip addresses it'll convert it to the ipv6 version instead automatically for us and we really can't do that magic ourselves so we do we always pass ip address uh, i mean numerical addresses to the resolver function on Mac. And that is fine, but I also then, uh, we also then accidentally do, did that for curl builds that uses CA res instead of the native resolver, which was just completely unnecessary. And in this case, it actually triggered a bug, another bug, but it's sort of that what made me realize that it was doing this. It, was, it wasn't really important. It was mostly a performance, uh, loss and we fixed a memory leak in, in the GNU TLS backend in a pretty f uh, common f code path uh, in uh, some certificate code ch uh, a, a check code so it might actually affect quite a lot of users using GNU TLS but it was fairly small so unless you're doing a whole lot of uh, reused uh, I mean if you're if you're connect uh, if your application is very long living this might affect you long term but <laughs> just based on the fact that so uh, basically nobody has reported it uh, well we got a report about it but uh, just one and, and uh, I don't think this affects a lot of users in a, in a very harmful way still a, a memory leak and in this case I I don't want to blame the GNU TLS project because it wasn't their fault but it was really really not clear and not documented how this memory was supposed to be freed. Um, so I actually filed a, a bug report on the GNU TLS project about them. They um, clarify this in the documentation and they did already. I think they should do it even better, but um, still, at least I hope we fixed it and that hopefully this uh, them fixing their uh, documentation should also help others uh, going forward. And talk about uh, the TLS backends. We also changed again how we initialized OpenSSL. That's sort of the standard. We've probably done it 20 times over the, over the years. How do you initiate the OpenSSL library? It's a mystery how you do it. And it's, uh, um, it's never been well documented. It's not well documented now either, I, I, I would say. But nowadays they at least have this function called initSSL. And now we're using it on on 110 and later and and we're not doing the other previous calls 
and this of course was triggered by a report from a user that uh, actually got a crash actually two users but and two independent problems solved with the same fix but still hopefully this is um, a step in the right direction unfortunately almost every time when we try to you know intervene with how we do uh, open SSL initialization it'll bounce back seven months later when someone uh, comes back and reports an, an edge case that we didn't really think about read about test or or uh, understand until that point in time and then it turns out that something we did a while back ago wasn't really compatible with the way they're using it and it's really it's a sort of landmine tender territory that that uh, thing anyway we're trying it out what could possibly go wrong <coughs> a few other than uh, protocol fixes well at least two to mention i fixed the transport to do um well scp and sftp over https proxy again i mentioned it in the last release but apparently i um, i saved some good pieces for this release so now i fixed it again uh, i actually obviously didn't test it good enough in the previous release but uh, hopefully i did it this release so now it's uh, it's uh, and this time i know i have a user that actually verified this fix better this time so it's at least for sftp done over https proxy really complicated setups you know when you're doing ssh over tls in a funny situation and here's another thing we actually debated this for um, a few days in the on um, the security team on curl is this a security problem or not and ooh, this is complicated so <clears throat> let me let me spend a few minutes on this because urls you know urls are terrible things because they're not documented well they are documented there are different ways to do urls there's one spec done in 2005 called rfc 3986 that's the one curl mostly follows and the one we all did back in 2005 actually slightly before that too because the previous one uh, 1738 was basically the same Anyway, that's how we did URLs called URIs back back in the day, and then over time, the browsers have switched to the what WG URL specification, which is not compatible. So nowadays we have a world when we're using the original RFC and the the browser spec, we use an either that one or that one or something in between, and we have some bugs and different opinions on how to do things and all tools and all libraries have different ways to th think about this so basically we don't have two url parsers that actually treat everything correctly or i mean correctly but because what is correct i mean the same way this means that if you're if you're doing things for example in, in a programming language in this case i got the report uh, someone using php so if you use a php or any other languages um, url parser and you would parse a url does this url use a host name that is fine sure or yes or no and then you take the next step and you use another url parser in the next step per perhaps you call curl using th that url that you previously said thought was okay because something in the url was okay according to that parser you then pa pass it on to curl using another parser will that parser treat the url correct uh, the same way as the previous parser maybe hopefully yes because um, when when they don't you introduce um, problems possibly security problems and in in the case of uh, in this case security problems yes and it's been a it's a, this is a known setup and it's been a known problem for a long time it's not fixed it's still there so really really do not mix url parsers in your programs this because this problem is not going away i'm i'm, I'm i I fixed the thing here that makes it a little bit better in this particular combination but there will be others and usually we deny them as security problems in curl because this isn't really a curl security problem nobody using curl uh, got hit by this they they get hit by this users get hit by this uh, due to this combination of url parsers so in this case it's actually so curl supports urls that aren't really urls uh, without sc the scheme part you know just specifying local host 
is actually you know curl localhost actually works because it it considers something that is specified without a scheme it tries to just well it might be HTTP so go with HTTP instead uh, well and it actually recognizes a few different prefixes on the host name so if you prefix the host name with FTP colon, uh, FTP dot blah 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 it'll think it's an FTP uh, transfer instead of HTTP uh, so yeah that, that's that's basically how it works and then you know uh, um, a URL can specify a port number. That means colon and a number afterwards. So you can say host name colon port number. Localhost colon 80 would be the port 80 on localhost. So that works. And then it follows the path. Localhost colon 80 slash path. Eh. And then it happens so that uh, I don't know who started this. Br the browser certainly supports uh, specifying no port number after the colon localhost colon path localhost colon slash blah 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 see where i'm coming to this so localhost colon slash slash path is then or happened to be a valid url or is it because then suddenly it looks exactly like a scheme uh, <coughs> yeah mm. so th in this case then curl only scans for schemes up to 40 bytes so if you would type curl localhost colon slash slash it would say eh, incorrect scheme we don't support that but if you would say localhost who ah, 41 letters colon slash slash it would try that as a host name which is completely surprising to anyone um, and not good i don't i can't really think of how this is a security problem to curl or curl users because um it's not a uh, there's not a scheme in the url and if you would use a, a scheme it wouldn't happen but uh, anyway that's a really long winding way is to say that i fixed this or changed this by making sure that if you s provide a url without a scheme we no longer accept a, a blank port number so you can not type localhost colon slash slash and be a valid uh, url anymore <clears throat> now you actually have to type if you don't use a scheme you have to use an actual port number uh, after that colon which is, i think it's fair anyway because why would you write the colon if you don't have any port number but it, i still allow it now if you actually if you provide a scheme in the url but not without the scheme I'm, I'm sure this will surprise some user at some point in the future but uh, anyway this is the long-winded explanation um we decided it's not a curl security problem. Whew. Okay, I'm 38 minutes in. So what about the future? What about the next version? The next version is most likely going to become 7.75.0 unless we have some evil bug uh, that makes us uh, patch it really, uh, really soon. Um, so, um, hopefully 75 to zero hopefully we will take our 56 days until this comes and what will we ship in this release <coughs> well of course i don't know um possibly well i'm pretty sure that i will do my initial hyper integration for this release hyper being a uh, uh, hp library for uh, written in rust that I'm, I'm working pretty intense on making sure that curl can support instead of doing HTTP natively and it's it's it's, it's uh, not actually true curl will still do a lot of HTTP internally and then hand over the more or less transfer part of the HTTP to hyper so it'll be you know we support different backends for TLS for SSH for name resolving for a lot of different things so this is just another way to add another backend for HTTP uh, in the build. And it will, I'm, I'm calling this the initial, initial hyper integration because it will certainly still be highly experimental. It still doesn't, I mean, you can't run the, the curl test suite with this yet. I mean, you can run a lot of tests, but not the entire test suite without problems. I'm still working on this and so I'm still going to improve things, but, uh, but, uh, but the, patch set and the work is growing really 
big and uh, and a bunch of it is really going to conflict with things in the main branch so really want to get the first stuff landed it really should not affect the native curl or anything so it's also a way to make sure that it really doesn't so that I continu can continue improving the hyper backend work hyper is a rust library curl will not be um, converted or ported to rust or anything curl is still C curl will most likely forever be uh, remaining written in C but why not introduce backends written in rust right curl already supports at least two different backends in written in rust so rust is just another language right so at as long as it provides an api that we can use we can use uh, backends written in uh, other languages for example rust and rust might be one of the most suitable other languages than c or c plus plus there's also work um i know that um this work with in integrating hyper is support um, sponsored by really by isrg the same the the company that is behind let's encrypt and they are also about to sponsor work on um, integrating russell's back and the russell's backend in, into curl which is the which is a tls library written in rust so more rust uh, coming to curl in, in the future <coughs> i don't know exactly uh, when that is going to happen because i think that's more work in progress or plan to happen than actual reality right now <coughs> you when people say c is insecure and unsafe and everything i think you should also remember that you can do a lot of problems with other languages too for example those three security problems i reported just now uh, talked about none of them are actually c specific you could do all of them with other languages <coughs> um yeah still maybe it's a good idea to fix uh, memory safety issues uh, and r uh, sort of reduce the risk i don't know we'll see how how that goes <coughs> um someone is asking about the http srr which is a uh, resource record to is pretty much the old service header but in dns so yes i would really like to support https resource record i won't mention it here for the 75 release because it's not going to happen by then i think i don't know of anyone who has actually started uh, uh, working on that uh, i certainly haven't i would love to but i don't think i will get time and energy enough to do that f in the short term uh, i mean in general i i love working on, on new stuff like that uh, in particular dns records are tricky to support since they're tricky to support using the native resolvers so i need to do that other ways like cares or dns or hps um, but also perhaps i'm also feeling a bit restricted these days to make sure that i work on features and, and stuff that i'm getting paid to do i do curl stuff full time i work on curl full time curl i give away curl free and open source for anyone right but i still need someone to pay me occasionally so i'm letting paid customers actually have priority here so whatever paid customers want done and features and bug fixes i work on that so that i can actually get food on my table i work on a lot of other things as well but so they have the higher priority here so if you really want stuff done in curl and you really want me to work on them consider getting a support contract there is work on uh, implementing support for this new protocol called gemini gemini is a i called it on the on the mailing list an http 0.9 and gopher combo something like that it's very similar to gopher but, and i think the inspiration has uh, there has been i mean i think gopher has, the, has been the inspiration um for this protocol they've basically taken gopher and fixed i think four or five different things that they think gopher did wrong and but they don't want it to be an http 
Um, so it's similar to very early HTTP, maybe. I think they've done some questionable design choices, but that's just me. It's in their right to do whatever they want. There's a PR coming. I've also, thanks to this and another thing I'll mention in a second, uh, I also wrote a new document for this release called newprotocols.md, which is a little document in the curl uh, documentation tree about what we require on new protocols when people want to uh, propose that we support them. Nothing strange, just something to think about. For example, we need tests, we need documentation, we need people to actually think this is a good idea. So, and maybe this is uh, this is going to pass all that. And if that's the case, we might support Gemini. Gemini. Gemini, Gemini soon. We support 25 protocols today, so that could be number 26. We'll see. There's a PR about it. Uh, it's, it hasn't really passed all those um, requirements, the requ required steps yet, but I don't see any obstacles uh, in the way really for them to just make sure that they do that. I'm working on a little new uh, command line option called create file mode. Yeah, maybe I'll Maybe that needs some polishing because it's the it's a way to set the mode or the mo the U mask really not the U mask but but like the you know the the mode that you set when you create a file in a, in the file system uh, read write executable those um, bits when you create a file remotely using the file protocol the SCP protocol or the SFTP protocol and then because then you can tell uh, curl to create files there and then it needs to know wi which mode to use to do that and right now you it just uses the default uh, mode that libcurl has internally and that might be a bit mm, limiting uh, so this way you can set it so libcurl has been able to do this for a very long time but now i want it to be offered to the command line tool and Speaking about new protocols, then uh, it showed up uh, a person who <laughs> a person who um, wrote a TLS implementation for Gopher, or rather making sure that we can do Gopher over TLS because apparently that is a thing. Talking about new protocols, Gopher was never done over SSL or TLS or anything, but now there's apparently a community and there are servers available to do TLS or gopher over TLS. So gophers colon slash slash might become a reality soon. For gopher, it's also easier to implement because we already have gopher tests and uh, just adding TLS to the gopher, to the test suite to do gopher S tests was not really hard. So I actually did that uh, little thing as a contribution to their pull request. So I think this has a good chance of, of getting landed for all you gopher over TLS users out there. I mean, I. I I have no doubt there's a massive interest in this <laughs> or maybe a bit niche um <coughs> so uh, i'm adding more stuff to the write out uh, feature in the curl command line tool it's uh, one of my feature um, um, one of my favorite command line option uh, flags it's uh, you know you use it on, on the command line to add stuff to mention at the end of the transfer Basically, if you want to know the uh, HTTP response code or uh, well, all sorts of things. And now I actually worked with a user who actually came up with a use case when when the when you're doing, for example, you're doing uh, parallel transfers and you want to when you get five transfers in parallel and two of them fail. So and and then the error messages are really not they're really inferior, uh, not good enough because you get maybe two error messages, but you don't know for which of the transfers they are actually about. So you have no idea two of the five failed, but which ones. So using this uh, these new option uh, or variables and, and uh, abilities in the write out flag, you can actually create your own error messages basically and your own information about previous tra or existing transfers, even success and failure. So. <coughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to this because uh, this, uh, the, the, the new stuff here really 
takes this option to to the next level for even more crazy stuff so hey uh, i like it i especially like my new invention called on error which makes the rest of the string only output uh, all the sent to the output if there was an error in the in the transfer otherwise it won't mention it so you can actually this way craft your own error messages basically fun stuff uh, you should try it out those are things that i didn't mention they didn't actually even exist when we did i mean the previous release so they were all things that come up this cycle and uh, um, uh, i also have these things that i last uh, eight weeks ago i mentioned these as pending things that we could get into this release apparently we didn't but they're still there uh, there's still things we should could get into the next release so uh, more authentication with <coughs> this aws s thing maybe we should remove the project directory 55,000 lines of generated xml and um, <coughs> the shared uh, known hosts file good stuff so i'm, I'm re i really i actually want all three of these to get merged and uh, if i'm just getting enough time and energy and maybe help enough from from you guys and, and everyone all the good people out there um I should be able to get most of them in next release. We'll see. <coughs> so there is good stuff. So in the next release will most probably be 7.75.0. Uh, and uh, it's going to happen in on February 3, 2021. Then if we don't do any panic patch releases before that, before then. And you can always go to this url oh look at that the old host name no um it's okay if you go to this old host name uh, or to this url it'll be redirected to the new host name on the same path and you can see the pending release notes for the for the next release which right now i think since i did the release this morning is probably wrong but it'll be right by the time you go there if you just hold off a little, little, little while or maybe you don't see this video until I actually fixed it. Okay, I want to emphasize that I work for Wolf SSL. We do commercial curl support. We, if you have any problems with curl in your uh, applications or at, in your company, you contact us. We have you hooked up and fix your problems and uh, maintain your stuff uh, as effective as you'd like it to be. Um, if you find a curl bug, you go to the issue tracker on, on our GitHub page and you submit it there with all the details you can figure out. And if that bug happens to be a security thing, you go there instead to the hackerone.com slash curl URL. And you don't do it as that user who submitted the FTP stack overflow and submitted at, at uh, GitHub first because that makes us really uh, get stomach aches because we we don't want to have security problems discussed in the public until we have them sorted out and can um, tell the world about them in in a proper way so that we can have the patch and the new release uh, sort of in sync with the announcement of the problem and really we um, we if you report a security problem today you can be sure that we will release and make it public as soon as we possibly can we usually just sync it with the next release but if it's important enough we can do a, a much earlier release than that so we work with the reporters of all the security problems and we figure out the best possible release date for for such problems and if it's not a security problem submit it in the open <clears throat> and really if you want to submit a security problem you might also just just a little advice um, don't report security problems on the curl site or our mailing list server or anything. We talk about security problems as in curl and libcurl, the products, the source code. That's the security kind of security problems we're talking about here. I want to emphasize and highlight all the good sponsors that have been sort of scrolling around here uh, above me for a while, because these are all the great sponsors that are making it possible for us to uh, keep spending all that money on on uh, bug bounties and everything so we have a lot of sponsors on the infrastructure parts and we have silver sponsors who are just handing in uh, 
regular donations on our <coughs> open collective account monthly good good friends good companies um, approved <coughs> So that's uh, it for this time. This is curl 7.74.0. There's not a lot more to say about the release. I'm going to hang out uh, in the stream for a while longer so we can discuss whatever. If you had uh, questions about this, anything I said or anything else related to curl, we can just hang out in the stream. Always go to the IRC channel. You can uh, tweet me at bag there on, on Twitter. And we have the mailing list, of course, where we do most of the real uh, discussions about curl, curl inf uh, infrastructure, architecture, stuff like that. And submit pull requests when you have things you want to improve in curl. So uh, until the next release then, bye. <laughs>